Alright, so let's talk about Hero Day Twisted Marsh or Kalia, whatever you want to call it. I'll try to make this guide a little bit quicker. I'll mostly explain the difficult phases because usually if you're trying to tackle this one, you already cleared the regular Twisted Marsh. So uh, this one I'll mostly explain the added mechanics rather than explaining all of the mechanics from scratch yeah and how this will go first of all i'll explain the basic things you need to know about this raid that are different from the regular one so you know how to tackle it at all second of all i'll give you some suggestion for units that i found to be really good in here and lastly i'll just leave a full unedited run for a very successful, I would say it's a little bit slower, but it is a very successful mechanically run, yeah? So first of all, what you need to know about this raid is the regular damage dealers that you usually bring into raids will not work here. So you are not able to bring an Argen, you are not able to bring a Narinha, a Dark Fox, and any other damage dealer that deals damage based on the amount of harmful effects so units that do damage based on dots for example like the sarion or uh, the wind if we do work here they do not trigger the passive but any unit that uh, does damage based on the number of harmful effects will trigger a passive from the boss meaning that you are not able to use these units in here the moment you do the boss will do a full cleanse it will put up level 10 deflect damage and you will essentially not be able to do much damage to the boss so first of all do not bring any of those units and if you're just curious to see how that deflect thing works uh, so in this run you will see that someone used a damage uh, that is based on the harmful effects and look at the boss hp as well as the debuffs all of the debuffs are cleansed and uh, the boss immediately puts up the flag damage level 10. And this debuff is super scary because first of all, it reduces the damage. The flag also reduces the damage you deal and it also gives you a portion of the damage. So if you do a very big damage new, for example, with a Perna, uh, you are going to be reflecting a lot of damage back to yourself. Now for the rest of the fight, uh, this phases are somewhat similar they do have some added mechanics so i'll start with this one for this one uh now not only you receive some dots but if you look at the debuffs you also receive evasion down i believe that is evasion down uh you receive the cover you receive down and you see receive bleed so usually you would want to dodge this ability because uh, you will receive level three not level 3 but uh you will see fear for three seconds however if you do have an anvil on your team uh that fear will instantly get cleansed at least on anvil and one of your units or a summoner so if you do have anvil i've tested it out i feel like dodging is not necessary if you do not have an anvil i would recommend trying to dodge this ability otherwise you will get feared and it will just be a little bit more difficult to come back from it also the second thing i want to mention is uh immunity no longer works in here uh, whenever the boss sees that you have immunity it will instantly do a special attack and remove that immunity so don't bother bringing immunity in this one you must bring a cleanser so your shushu will not work uh, any other immunity unit you might have will not work and for cleansers, I would recommend units like Annabelle, like a Lulu, if you are really down bad on the cleansers, uh, over any other immunity monster. And now the same, the next thing I want to mention is this little uh, spinning loop. As you can see, each player has its own spinning uh, circle. So this circle will deal damage to all of your units. It will deal it slowly. However, if two or more of you group up closely together that circle will do a lot of damage so the goal whenever you have any of these circles you usually have them in phases where you cannot damage the boss so like the snake phase uh, the phase where she appears in those various rooms uh, basically whenever you have that one uh, make sure to split up uh, away from your teammates do not reach each other circles otherwise you will be receiving a lot of damage i think i got hit uh buy it for like a second and around 50 to 60 percent of my total hp was gone instantly so yeah be careful there and do not get hit 
defy those circles whenever uh, they appear around you. And the next thing you need to know about a different phase is the forbidden spell. So this one you usually just group up as per usual, nothing changes here. The cool thing here is you no longer need to group really precisely because the boss doesn't actually do knockback, it just straight up freezes or rather petrifies your units in place, so it's much much easier to group up together. And you must take this as a three person uh, hit, otherwise if you take uh, the hit as solo or as two people, you will receive little damage, so make sure you're taking it as three, because if you take it as three, you will only receive 66 to 67 percent of your HP as damage. And the moment this phase happens, if you look at the buffs that the boss has, let's just wait for her to finish this animation, uh, you can see she has spell shield for 30 hits. This spell shield needs to be removed before she transforms from the snake phase to the human phase. And the reason for that is if you do not receive the, uh, or if you rather not remove the spell shield, the damage she does will be amplified 10 times. So it's really not difficult to remove it. Uh, in most cases, you're able to clear it with just summoners alone. For example, if you have something like a wind cleave, his first skill and second skill both hit three times. Uh, you got units like Orbia, whose uh, first skill I think hits three times on like all elements. So it's not gonna be difficult to kill it. And after your units are alive, units like Huahi, like Perna, who can hit the boss three times, four times, even the Juno, uh, as you can see, one of the teammates has it. You will be able to clear the spell shield, just make sure to not forget to hit that boss because just running away will not do in here. You must uh, remove that spell shield. Oh, and I realized I forgot to mention one thing. So, the blood loop, right? Not the blood loop, but basically the snake one. Uh, usually, uh, you just receive snakes, uh, your goal is to dodge them. Now, uh, as you can see, the boss will add some of these pearls, which uh, you shouldn't step in. I mean, you can survive them, but you will be receiving a lot of damage and harmful effects. Also, you must keep moving because every few seconds, uh, the boss will place these purple blood pools uh, in your location. So, uh, you are already trying to run away from the teammates because of that uh, spinning blood thingy around you. Uh, the way you run away from your teammates should be spread out somewhat equally because if you place a purple blood pool in the location where uh, your ally will be running to, it will just cause him a lot of trouble. Just keep in mind that you must dodge the red pools, you must dodge the purple pools, you're also dodging the snakes and if you step into one of the red pools you will be receiving slowness so it's gonna be even more uh, difficult. And now I'm gonna launch uh, the full run uh, for you to see. It's around three minutes long. It was one of my first uh, runs that we did, so it's definitely not on the fastest side, but you will see how I handle this at least on my own. Uh, for me, since I am a cliff, I mostly try to save my mana for healing and cleansing because I am the one getting hit usually. Uh, if you are a backline and you're not getting getting hit by the main uh, boss abilities, I do recommend doing uh, more damage oriented usage of abilities with mana. So for example, spamming Perna or something like that. But yeah, while the run goes, uh, I will try to give my tips on the units that I found to be super good in here. And those are going to be the main units that I personally use. And you will see most of these units in the... Uh, top usage statistics as well. So first of all, the damage dealer. Uh, because you're not able to bring units like Argen, Narin, Ha and all of those, the best damage dealer I would say by far is the Perna. Uh, the Perna, first of all, because it applies damage taken up, if most of you stack that one, uh, you will be able to level up that debuff up to maybe even level 10. Also, because it has inbuilt defense penetration and uh, insane multipliers, it will just do a lot of damage. And even if you use the Perna's ability, you can switch to another unit and use that unit's ability while Perna is still using hers, and then just later switch back uh, to that one. If you don't have a Perna or you don't feel like using a Perna, uh, you're gonna have to search for another damage dealer based on uh, 
the multipliers you will see maybe you'll find a damage dealer that does good damage based on dots or something like that just make sure to not bring any damage dealers that deal damage based on harmful effects also some other good units is juno uh juno is super good for people especially cleaves who are sitting in the front line and uh, basically trying to tank the damage because you will be receiving like four to five harmful effects and juno first of all will give you a massive heal and also can stack at the mana region from cleansing all of those harmful effects which means you will be able to stack your ultimate super fast and yeah uh for other units anavel uh i wasn't using anavel previously but i switched to anavel as a cliff pain and the reason i switched to anavel is because of the blood pool so you've probably seen it in the run uh in some of these i have been uh feared by this ability i believe this one will hit it as well as you can see i have a fear and because annabelle has a passive where she cleanses a cc effect every two seconds that fear instantly got cleansed and i'm able to move again so personally if you have annabelle i would say you not need to dodge this ability but you can it's up to you i personally just use uh, a cleanse right after getting hit by this and uh, i am more than healthy enough to continue the run so Annabelle another great unit she also has a defense break so it helps set up the damage on the boss and also uh, units like Huahi so Huahi is a perfect unit of course you gotta be careful with the attack buff uh, try to not buff uh, any buffs or not debuff the buff before she uses her steel I know some people still fail this even on the regular marsh run so uh, if you don't know her steel ability, you will see the boss uh, prepare some sort of a heart. So before this heart is sent, try to not use any abilities that either buff uh, your team or debuff the boss. Because that ability will transfer the debuffs and it will steal your debuff. So after that heart is uh, like sent out, then you feel free to use your abilities with Haki, such as attack buff, defense break, all of that. And you will be safe to do damage. So yeah. Uh, the boss definitely a pretty hard one i would say but uh definitely beatable once you understand how it works and yeah hope you enjoyed and peace